If you want to be in a happy relationship one day, dear one, put a ring on your left finger. If you're lucky enough, you find yourself on that type of a path where you are in the observable space, meaning that you have become the observer of what is. It's a very humbling space to be in. I know when I first began to become aware that I was the common denominator in all these chaotic relationships, and, and specifically right after I got divorced, I was still attracting narcissistic men and narcissistic friends. And I thought, you know, finally, I have to get this figured out after a very devastating relationship like brought me to my knees. And I realized that it was time to get clean emotionally. And so I wanted to speak about detachment and how incredible a gift detachment really is and how it plays into Buddhism for instance and Buddhists their goal is to be not attached to anything they understand at a very fundamental level that everything is temporary including life and so attaching oneself to anything in the physical world that is temporary is really a futile and maddening thing to do one of the things that strikes me over and over as I help adult children of alcoholics confront their issues is that detachment is all over the board and it's absolutely necessary. And so yesterday I had a client who I was teaching about detachment and how he had to detach himself from needing to please others. He had to detach himself from the unconscious belief that was running in the garden of his mind, from the idea that had him thinking that he needed approval from other people. And so when we are running off of our programming, because we're still below the veil of consciousness, we are in reactive states. And on the quantum level, we are queued up for anxiety. And so on a quantum level, if you think about an atom, like, so this is the nucleus of the atom, right? So the center of the atom that is you is a positively charged proton. So you at your core are positive. And I'm not even kidding, dear one. You, me, at our core, we are all light. So if we have this atom, right, and it's got a nucleus and it's got a proton in the middle of it and it's positive, well, what we have in its field, in its magnetic field, are a bunch of electrons. Electrons have the ability to jump from one atom to the next atom and so on. When you are raised by anxious beings, that quantum field sounds like this. It is entangled, it's enmeshed, you have electrons that are bumping off of each other and there's no peace. And so when you grow up in that type of a home, you must ground yourself to that level, that energy level. You have to, because you have to in order to survive it. You have to sort of morph to what's happening around you. So if you're the youngest of four or five, six kids, and you're female, for instance, you've got older brothers, and you're the only female, you know, you're going to get your butt kicked in that environment. There is no respect in ACOA families. Alcoholics aren't respecting themselves. Let's say mom's the codependent and dad's the alcoholic. Mom's angry, and she's not respecting herself. Mom's resentful full of dad. She's not respecting herself. Mom is kind of like throwing her hands up in the air and taking the position like, well, I have no choices. So now she's ornery and she's kicking the cat and she's yelling at the kids. And now it makes her feel better to keep the house perfect. It's got to look perfect. It's got to look perfect. So mom fuels her anxiety in the, the catering to the house and making it look perfect. So now there's the fear of it not looking perfect. So now every time someone walks on a rug, like my mother, oh my God, she'd vacuum the rug a certain way and God forbid we stepped on it and you could see our footprint. It was maddening. It was like, what, where am I supposed to stand? What am I supposed to do? So I grew up in that type of nervous energy and I knew very much that my mother expected the house to look perfect. I didn't know that she was trying to control her anxiety. I didn't know that. I just knew that if I didn't stay on my toes, then I couldn't stay out of her way. So I had to queue up to meet her anxiety so that I could figure out what her next move was and protect myself. And so the problem was that I was 21, got engaged, and I brought that quantum energy with me. And what do I attract? I attracted another quantum being that was just as anxious as I was, but he just hit it better. So now we have two quantum beings that are bouncing off of each other. We have double that negative momentum, double that negative energy. And then what do we go and do? Me and my first husband, we go and we have three children because <laughs> we're so smart. That being said, back then, that wasn't too smart back then, but I don't I can't say that I regret it because I don't know where I'd be without my three babies today. Like everything worked out fine. 
So when you become aware that you are the common denominator and you become aware that you're spending time in a quantum space with someone who jacks you up, who like makes you feel anxious, who is really like doubling the amount of momentum you got going on in your auric field in a negative way. The first step is to become aware of that. Now the second step is to monitor your emotions. So if every time I'm around Bob, I get anxious, it, now it's my job to honor that chakra system, honor that what's showing up. So wow, when I'm around Bob, I feel anxious. I feel angry. I feel very pulled off core. Core is calm. Core is peace. Core is light. Core is love. I'm not feeling very loving right now. I'm feeling very pulled off core. Mm -hmm. What can I do right now? Well, honor that, accept, feel, decide what to do about it. I'm going to shift gears. I'm going to end this conversation with Bob. Click. You see Bob in the grocery store, he doesn't see you. You leave the leave your cart there, get the hell out of the grocery store. Just go, boom, boom, and then have a giggle party in the car. <laughs> and he didn't see me, he didn't see me. That's what I did. That's what I did. But truly, dear one, the key to a lot of healing is detachment. Figure out what's wrong and then observe it and then decide what you're going to do about it. It's not easy. It is a process. It is a matter of owning the emotions that come up. Part of us detaching is understanding that a lot of us seek validation outside of self. And so when you begin to validate self from within, so if you hear yourself saying, I gotta stop hanging out with this girl, I gotta stop hanging out with that guy, and you stop hanging out with them, you're honoring self. So the block begins to clear because you figured out a way how to flow your energy in a more positive direction. You figured out how to control this clay that is the energy. And the energy is coming from your thoughts. So if you hang out with Bob or Sue and they're negative people, then understand you are creating that quantum reality. And whatever manifests in the physical, it's just a matter of time before the negativity manifests into something physical, whether it's a heartache or heartbreak or whatever, it's going to manifest because this is a manifestation type existence. When you're detaching from these types of beings, you also have to detach from your desire to be validated outside of self by someone who don't serve you. So you have to detach from the belief, which is a seed that was planted into the garden that is your mind by your mother and your father. So there's a whole lot of detachment going on. Yeah, you got to detach from that so-and-so. Absolutely. You got to keep him out of your quantum experience. You have an auric field that shoots out about eight feet from your heart out, from your back out, up and below you. So you have this orb, this eight foot orb that is around you of magnetic energy. And so you literally share quantum space with other people all day, every day. So you want to keep this space as clear as possible of negative people. You also want to increase whatever you have going on in front of you. Make sure it looks all pretty and make sure it represents peace to you because you are going, receiving energy from those things as well. If you want to be in a happy relationship one day, dear one, put a ring on your left finger. That represents to the world that you want to be married to a beautiful person that is going to complete this process for you, allow you to feel loving. If you want to experience love in your life, then put a picture on your wall of two people or an abstract painting of two objects that represent people that are happy and in love. Start doing things like that. See yourself as a couple, but coupled with someone who serves you. That will also help. That's going to affect your quantum reality, your quantum field, and your quantum physical manifestation. So I hope this has helped you um, clear up some ideas about detachment. First, you detach physically from people that are negative, And then what you do when you're alone, you work on detaching your thinking process from these ideas that no longer serve you. That gets a little sticky, and sometimes we need some help with that. We need some clarity. But that's really where the work has to get done. So... I hope you pulled away with the idea that A, detach from people who are negative, friends, and then two, when you're away and your quantum field begins to calm down because you're not, it's not being added to as a negative by other people, create sacred spaces, meditate, and then when you come out of those meditative states, begin trying to detach from these seeds in your head that mom and dad planted so long ago. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hey, if you love this content, don't forget to check out the next video and you can go to my website and take the codependency quiz.